It's two months later, and this is one of, if not the best, flagship smartphones on the market. Or is it? Today's video is being brought to you in partnership with Epidemic Sound, and do I have a deal for you today? But we'll talk more on that later. For now, you can hit the link down in the description below and get a 30-day free trial to Epidemic Sound and handle all of your audio and sound effect needs for online social media uploads and content creation. So if you don't know the drill by now, the first thing we like to get out of the way over here are the petty dislikes, the petty cons. Let's talk about them. No micro SD card slot. And honestly, at this point, I think it's over for that. Second con would be no price reduction. And the only reason I bring that up because there are other competitor companies producing flagships at a cheaper price point than this S22 Ultra. And last but not least in the petty cons is there was no battery increase. We're still at 5,000 milliamp hours only. Now the reason why I bring that up is because there was once a strong rumor about a new Samsung technology coming to the market, but it has yet to manifest. But we'll talk more in detail about battery later on in this review. And you won't want to miss that section. <laughs> Samsung is still doing what they do best and that's displays. It's two months later and the one thing I will never get tired of is how great and how beautiful this display truly is. It never gets old, like literally. I mean, I can watch a ton of YouTube on here <laughs> and scroll down my Instagram timeline and Twitter forever. You don't follow me there? What are you doing? <laughs> Anyways, nevertheless, the Quad HD resolution and 120 Hertz refresh rate provide an ideal user experience visually. As I said before, I just love watching content on Samsung devices. Everything just pops. Although I do have to note that a few longtime Samsung users have made the complaint that the speaker quality and audio quality of this device is slightly inferior to previous models. Although I do agree, I don't think it's a deal breaker or anything that's gonna ruin this user experience. I think it's a note that Samsung needs to make for the upcoming release and devices. They ain't letting you slack, Samsung. You gotta bring the heat. Now, let's talk about, oh, see, you see I went to the right side because it's not there anymore. The beloved S Pen. I am a Note user and always will be a Note user, which is why I have an S Pen for every Samsung device that allows one. My Z Fold 3 has an S Pen. My S21 Ultra has an S Pen, which is currently misplaced somewhere. And that's the problem that is fixed with the S 22 Ultra because it's now has returned to its proper placement. The Note is back, baby. <laughs> oh, and did I mention it's the quickest S Pen to date? If that means anything to you. Nevertheless, some people use it and some people don't. Either way, I'm just glad that it has made a return to the interior of Samsung devices. Now, let's talk cameras. Oh, Samsung cameras. How I love and hate you at the very same time. Bittersweet. <laughs> I love the technology. I love the capabilities and potential. I love the dedicated telephoto lens. It's my favorite lens. But here's what I don't love. That washed out over brightened look that Samsung tends to give you. The overexposure that Samsung tends to lean towards. The infamous skin smoothening. And just to be frank, the lack of calibration for skin tones like mine. Every big name phone manufacturer has made it an effort, who are all direct competitors, might I mention, especially here in the US, to be inclusive to the brown skin tone. Apple does it, and Google Pixels did it recently. So why not Samsung? Someone had to say it. <laughs> but that gripe aside, flip this camera module app into pro mode and get a glimpse of the true potential of this camera array. Battery life. Now let's get into the controversy surrounding this S22 Ultra, a very long debate, and that's battery. But before we dig deep and analyze true battery performance, I need to tell you about today's video partner, Epidemic Sound. And today I have an exclusive discount code for my audience that's going to save you 50%. Yes, I said 50% on an annual subscription to the personal plan. 
new users only. And you still get the 30 day free trial, meaning that if within 30 days, you can possibly step out of that if you don't find it useful, which I doubt that would ever happen. So just click the link down in the description below, use the coupon code CJ50 and save 50% on the annual personal plan sign up. My gift to you and shh, hey listen here player, like this is something I worked out for you guys, so y'all gotta keep that on the low and not tell the whole world, but benefit in the process. Now let me tell you exactly why you need Epidemic Sound. Especially if you're a content creator like me and you upload to YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, all of the above, TikTok as well. The one thing that you need to notice is that if you are monetizing your platform and you're putting music or sound effects that don't belong to you, you are jeopardizing your monetization and subjecting yourself to a possible DMCA takedown, which is what Epidemic Sound eliminates for you and me. Now back to this controversy that is the battery in the S22 Ultra. Because I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what to believe when it comes to this battery life. Some of you say that it's trash and it totally sucks. Then I see a bunch of you come and tell me that it's just fine for you, multi-day use and so on. Which one is it? The one thing that I can say for me personally, I get decent battery usage out of the S22 Ultra for me. I can make it through my work day and be just fine in battery life. I'm mid to heavy-ish user. Also, I don't overload my device with pointless, crazy third-party apps. Some of them are questionable. Y'all gotta keep it a buck. Y'all got some questionable apps out there. And another point to be made is the fact that this all solidifies the statement that I always say, battery is absolutely 100,000% totally subjective to the user, their apps, and their personal optimization, which is something we must talk about. When you're on the Android platform, you have to optimize it for your use and your apps as it will not do that for you. It kinda does, but it's not in full. So basically, if your battery life is not the greatest, then I highly suggest you consider the apps that you're using, your phone settings, and possibly going out and learning how to properly optimize an Android device. That is, if you're struggling with battery life. Performance. I can make this one super easy and short for you. It's still fast, it's still powerful, and it's still as snappy as day one two months ago. That's all that needs to be said. Now I am on the Snapdragon version. Let me put, make that clear. I don't have Exynos, I'm in the States, and I don't use Exynos versions. But the Snapdragon version, we good over here. If you have Exynos, comment down below and let it be heard. Now, everything that we've spoken about thus far all adds up to this user experience. What is the collective conclusion when we put it all together? In my honest and humble opinion, as someone who uses everything, this flagship smartphone is a good user experience, period.